So for um, number five, we're taking the area bounded between these curves and then we're revolving it about the y-axis, so about here. Um, I've gone ahead and I've drawn these lines and I've shaded the area between them and now let's try to revolve them. So when we revolve it using the shell method, what, what is happening is we're taking the height um, of the upper boundary, which is this curve in orange, minus the lower boundary, which is just the um, the x-axis, right? We're taking this height and then we're revolving it like so. So when we revolve it, we form a cylinder. And now the cylinder is an empty cylinder, so maybe I'm going to draw it like this. Yeah. So if we think about what happens with the cylinder, when we open it up, it's like a sheet of paper, right? Like an infinitely thin she sheet of paper that we've wrapped around the y-axis. And this has an area. So um, when we take, say, another um, cylinder now with this height a little bit further from the x-axis and we go like this. Um, so when we sum up all these cylinders, we're going to end up with a volume. That's going to be the volume of this area in yellow when it gets revolved, right? Um, so we can say here that the volume is basically the integral of all these areas of all these sheets. So it's the sum of all these sheets um, from, let's see, from x is equal to zero, right, that this boundary over here, all the way out to x is equal to one, that boundary. So it goes from zero to one. And now basically a, a of x, it just means that this sheet here is a function of x. So we can see that as we move on, um, we go from zero and as we advance on the x-axis, uh, it gets, the height gets smaller and smaller and then the base gets wider and wider. So this area definitely changes as a function of x. Um, so now let's think about how to express this, right? Well, um, if we're talking about this base over here, this base like so, well, this base is just uh, the base of my circle as it gets revolved, right? It's just this guy over here. Now, the ba the which is the circumference of the circle. Now, the circumference of any circle is given by 2 pi r, and we just have to think about what the radius is. Well, the radius, it goes from the origin all the way out to, um, to my value of x, right? It's the value where, wherever my function is being evaluated. So, for example, in this smaller cylinder, my value would be like right here. So it would be like we're closer and closer to the x-axis, right? So as we can see here, the value of the radius is just wherever I'm at on the x-axis. It's just the value of x. So, therefore, um, my base here is just... 2 pi x, where x is the radius, and my height, well, my height is just wherever it touches this orange function, right? Um, so, for example, if I go further and further, it would just touch this orange function, this e to the um, negative x squared, like so. So my height is just the value of the function wherever I'm at on my x-axis. So it's basically just e to the minus x squared. Therefore, my area is going to be base times height, so it's going to be um, 2 pi x times e to the minus x squared. That's my area. So once I have an expression um, for an area as a function of x, I'm ready to set up my volume. So I'm going to put the pi outside because it's a constant, so that gives me pi. Um, and then this gives me, let's see, 2x times e e to the minus x squared dx. Now, uh, and that's from 0 to 1. Um, now, I do have to do use substitution, right? Because there's no anti-derivative derivative straight off like this. Um, it is a composition. And the reason that we know is because we have a function. So we have a function here. And it's, and it's derivative, right? It's derivative over here. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to say that... Um, u is equal to minus x squared, and therefore du is equal to minus 2x dx. And so we don't have a minus 2, right, to substitute it, so we're just going to divide both sides by minus. So therefore we have that minus du is plus 2x dx, which is actually what we have. So we're going to um, rewrite this integral with pi outside from 0 to 1. And whenever we see minus x squared, we're going to substitute that by u, right? So let me just highlight that. That's u. Um, so we're going to go e to the power of u. And then whenever we see um, 
Whenever we see 2x dx, we're going to replace that with minus du, because minus du is 2x dx. So we're going to replace this with um, a minus, that minus goes outside, let me just, that minus goes outside, and then so du. Uh, so I've just substituted it, I put the minus outside together with the pi because it's a constant. And so when we integrate this, um, this is just equal to negative pi. Um, this integral is just e to the u, right? So when we substitute it, it's just basically minus pi um, e to the negative x squared. And all of this evaluated from 0 to 1. So when we evaluate it, we're going to get minus pi times, let's see, let's evaluate it at 1. Um, so that's e to the minus 1. And then minus e to the 0 is just 1, right? So then when we distribute everything, we basically just get that this is pi times um, the minus changes the sign here, so it's just plus 1, and then minus 1 over e. Um, so let me see if I got that right. I feel like my, my sign is wrong somewhere. Let's see. Um, e to the 1 minus pi. Um, yeah, that is, that is correct. So that is what we get uh, in the volume when we revolve it about the uh, the y-axis.